So, first of all, thank you for, for Sonoy, for uh, this convention for music making in, on free, free open source for software, which is Linux is, is one of pressing systems that I dedicate my life uh, as a development. I'm, I must say also first that I am Rui Nuno Capella, which is, is my website and my domain. I am the developer of many, many or several pieces of software that works on Linux, based for a Linux Audio uh, environment, especially dedicated for Jack uh, and for MIDI, also MIDI, and also for, for Jack MIDI. But that's included on Jack. Okay. First, I do several pieces of, of, of software. Mo the most well known of for you, for you all, it will will be what? Ah, oh, QJet <laughs> Control. Yeah, someone remembers it. <laughs> it still uses. So, yeah, <laughs> it's still awesome. But uh, due due to Linux distributions are stalled in in terms of. Uh, Progressing development of and following for development of QGXTL, they still stuck on the very old version of QGXTL that is not not catching up with the times, with the features and the, the functionalities that uh, appeared on J on Jack and in Jack Two and in Jack Debuzz and and, and uh, their their relationship with Pulse Audio and. All the stuff that uh, Philippe uh, will talk uh, on the on the earlier presentation. I don't have a pr first, uh, also second. I don't have a presentation, so this is a, a free form workshop, as always, as I've been in, in LACs. I have a old timer in LAC, LACs, LACs for Linux Audio Conference. And uh, yeah, my first contribution for the Linux Audio world was QGXTL as a front end to do to Jack. But we are in Sonoy. We are not in LA LAC. In Sonoy is dedicated for music production, and we, do, we sh shall talk about music production and mu music uh, making, and not quite technical about development and programming, programming languages and uh, operations of software and, and such. So I will now diverge for the main point, and the main point of the name of this present, this talk, or this, uh, this workshop, whatever you may call it, and it will be dedicated for using QTractor. QTractor is my ma major project. It's a very big project. It was the largest of, of me, and is, uh, it has a bit of a story, and uh, it, uh, it's already in the year. It, as its current form for 15 years, almost. And it started in 2005, uh, when a uh, time when the ardor was only audio. Uh, the Rose Garden was only MIDI. There was Muse sequencer that d did both, okay, but you can have all everybody asks me why didn't, didn't you uh, instead of starting a, a brand new door big project of you, of yours why don't you contribute for for one or, or, or to other or to the rose garden or for muse the muse was the, the the biggest candidate for that but now when we i get to the at the time you see in 2005 2006 muse sequencer was a uh, uh, one guy also Werner? Uh, I don't quite remember the name. Yeah, and uh, the source code was entirely ugly and in German. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and I don't I don't speak a word in German. So, I, how can I contribute for uh, such a project? So I started my own. That's the the, the, sta the starting point of QTractor. QTractor in two years wa was yeah, developed uh, in these mo most core uh, features, and it was presented first at uh, 
LALAC 2007 at TU Berlin. And I always say that the TU Berlin was sponsored, the, not TU Berlin, was the, uh, the, the former uh, academic of the Ableton guys. Yeah. Yeah, and at the time, Ableton was only audio also. <laughs> so it, it was starting media at, the, at that time. And I was kind of saying in the, in the hallways of, of the LAC 2007 in TU Berlin that q Tractor ought to be a clone of Ableton with audio and MIDI. And, and I, get, I have the next three years, I'll do something like that. Yeah. But the, that kid did, didn't come true, <laughs> 15 years after of that. And uh, yeah, we still have uh, only q Tractor as uh, we know it now, as a timeline uh, uh, audio MIDI sequencer, which I always say that is not a DAW, but it's a, a sequencer with DAW features. Yeah. How much of you doesn't, doesn't know a thing about what q Tractor is, or was? You don't know nothing. You're a newcomer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. ah, or at least never started. And who has started and decided so for something else? What you didn't like uh, about q Tractor? <laughs> <laughs> Can I hear him? <laughs> yeah? I actually, I don't. I recorded yes. an entire piano piece in Q-Tractor and th um, MIDI, and then yeah. I don't know. I stopped making music, maybe. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, no, no. It, uh, I began to write my own software. Actually, that's oh, you, you yeah. started doing yeah. your own software yeah. also. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> so uh, I'm not a musician. I'm an pro, pro IT professional uh, for a long time, and a programmer and a developer, a freelancer developer also. I do these kind of things, uh, many things, as you already probably know, for, for too much time. And I do the all decade this for this development, I decade only as an hobbyist. So it's just a, a late night, a late night uh, job <laughs> that I used to do it. So, but yeah, it's too much to do, too, too less time, and uh, and I'm also aging, yeah, getting old. My interests can diverge uh, now and then, but I still as dedicate to for Linux audio and music making, as uh, with my software for the whole community. One of the big pieces, ah, yeah, q Tractor, and uh, the latest newcomers for, for this collection of software was the V1s, synths, and samplers, and, and as, a, as standalone jack applications or the LV2 plugins that you can work it out and run it on, uh, on any host, the LV2 host, like Ardor, like Muse, like uh, I think Muse was a, a, late, uh, a late adopter of LV2 plugins. And uh, and of course, Qtractor and several others. Uh, we we are talking about free and open, completely free and open software on Linux, because I only do on Linux. Yep. Okay. So let's go how to make music with Qtractor. Nils, can you help me? <laughs> because I'm no musician, first of all. <laughs> yeah, man. But talk about your, your experience, your bad experience with Kitrax. <laughs> uh, okay. No, we, we, I, do you have uh, something to do now, right now over there? Okay, you can sit there and, and play the music. <laughs> so. If you want, if someone is more experienced or you have a, so with the uh, with indignation, you can t t take over the, the poor job of of Niels that he is. He's, a, he's my slave now. So, <laughs> well, let's start Q Tractor, okay? I, I first before starting this talk, I 
completely erased my current configuration of, of Qtractor. So what you want to see is like Qtractor has uh, starts out of the box when we install it, or you compile it. You just, it's just the first time that you run Qtractor. Of course, as a Jack application, it has to be uh, uh, started first uh, uh, by QJXTL or Cadence or whatever. Jack has to be running, and also MIDI um, the kernel modeler is also to, uh, it has to be also loaded on, on the or no predicting system. This is the pre-requirements for running QTracker, okay? So, this is the default aspects and GUI presentation that QTracker has. Uh, as you can see, it looks very bland. Very you is it simple for you to understand what's going on? What you what I can do with, the, with this kind of software? It's a timeline editor, so you layer layer tracks on the timeline tracks or audio or MIDI uh, over the the canvas, and uh, you work with the with that with that on in a timeline in a horizontal way. But first, let's customize first the the GUI of your tractor. First, you can put it greater or bigger, <laughs> with bigger aspect. Yeah, that's yeah. one other one other thing that I before I'm getting ahead of, of things. You know, the audio and the music making is is now based on the uh, on Jack, and uh, it, it has to deal. We have to deal with uh, something technical, but every audio producer or sound engineering has to know by by heart. He's like, you have to to choose your sample rate, working sample rate, which match match with the, the jack one and the, the, the uh, audio device that you are working. And the, the sample format and the, and then the word size. And also, the file format size, it's very important. The default one, we go to view, view the options. Or the, uh, the default that you get is the, the long time wave Microsoft dot wave uh, f uh, PCM files, and uh, in signing 16 bits. That yeah, there's not nothing wrong about that, but. It's uh, uh, quite limited because it's fix fixed point, 16 bit. So you don't have, when you write to this kind of file, you don't have headroom enough, and you can get into severe, severe problems and sounding in like clipping and uh, damage to the sound. So the first thing that we have to do, at least, is just making it, wa yes, wave format, but in 32-bit floating point. Okay, this gives you uh, plenty of air room for mixing, for uh, working, and then you all in deal with the the dynamic range on the final stage when you are mastering and when you are producing the the final the final piece or the final work. So, meanwhile, I suggest you for you to change for floating point 32 bit because it's also the, the what matches with jack native uh, sample format uh, in audio so that that then now let's do what i can do to with this yeah i can record my own music my own performance or i can use uh, sampled and uh, standard uh, audio or MIDI files that are already around uh, on your collections, on your, especially on your computer and file system, that we can hear or can you can play here and arrange in the timeline. Let's use for uh, for some feature that is not quite visible at first time, but is like the f uh, file system browser. Let's look like some some files audio files or MIDI files that you ca can uh, look at this. I know my collection is over, over here, so 
I'll go to some uh, sample sample collection that I already know. Where is it? No? But you can browse it. You can, you can so let's see. Let's start with the drum loop. Yeah. Mm. And see. Well, okay. Let's hear about this. Very blended sound music or the drum and sound music because this is a, a drum and drum and bass uh, collection of, of samples, and, and you can just yeah, you can browse and preview the sound of each file. You just double click on it or you use the, or you use the, the right click context menu. For it. I don't I'm not, I'm not always seeing what uh, what you're seeing, but that doesn't matter. So I I would like. Let's choose the first one. What you now? You what you can do with this sample file? Yeah, you can. You have you. Maybe you want to wish to put it on the on the timeline. So you just drag and drop. You can do this from this browser or from any other file manager on Linux on desktop Linux, on on any desktop. You can use GNOME, KDE, uh, whatever. And you just drag and drop files over the the canvas, and then it's it's arranged so it's over there. So it's now on the uh, placed, uh, located on the timeline. He created when I drop a file. This is an audio audio file. He creates automatically an uh, audio track. And an audio track is something like this. Yeah. It has a. You can change the the height of the track. Yeah, this is a very common common pattern on all doors, but this is a sequencer with door features, <laughs> and <laughs> and you place the, the the file that now is called the clip over the timeline, and you can change the position of the clip, and you can even change the the size. Instead of but changing the size of the clip, it's just adding silence, okay? But you can also say you can time stretch or adapt or adjust the tempo, the monotronic tempo of the timeline, according to this uh, this uh, integral clip or integral fi audio file. Let's look like so. You can see also the in, in this box. Over there, here, this is the tempo and the time signature of the piece. What, what happened? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and you see that it doesn't really match what tempo is in on this file. Yeah, the scale or the ruler, the adding ruler, this is metronomic. Uh, time is musical time is not uh, sample time. It's in Q tra in Q tractor. It's always based on BBT bars, bits, and ticks that you have. It's called also called MIDI time, but uh, yeah, it's the metronome time, musical time that is, is expressed on the or is laid out on the on the ruler. And all divisions that you see here are for metric time and the current metric is 20 20 uh, 120 bits per minute it's bpm the tempo is, is, is expressed in bpm a bit in tractor equals a quarter note it's a standard quarter note if I'm start talking about some gibberish technical gibberish that you understand please raise your hand uh, let me explain okay so four on four so uh, uh, each bar or each me measure has four bits or four quarter notes, and the, the each quarter note has the length. Each quarter note, the standard minima or so quarter note, has is its length, or is the note type or the yeah. You know, you know if you know mu musical te te theory, yeah, you know wha what I'm meaning. So, but let's start with. I don't know uh, what the tempo of this file. So uh, I will take for for this specific clip. I can do 
a tool, that there is a tool here, that I can mm, scan the file and try to detect the bits or the onsets and, and they infer about the time. So he says that the tempo, the tempo, not the time, the tempo or BPM are approximately 174. Yeah, not, but you can see. Uh, but I know that uh, there are a number of uh, quarter notes or bits, and I can adjust this for my more precisely. So uh, I get 174. Uh, this is the tempo that when I press OK here, then the the timeline, the old, the old uh, metronomic uh, timeline, is adjusted now to the to this audio file. So there's tempo 174, four on four. Yeah, but uh, let's hear it. Yeah. Okay. This uh, it sounds like a loop, isn't it? So is that? Oh, I I drag it. Hello, uh, it's over. Sorry. I can uh, I can always undo any operation. Undo or redo or repeat the other operation. So this is quite seems like a like a loop, isn't it? Let, let's try if it is re exactly a loop. Okay, I can loop again when I I put my blue lines, which is the vertical cursors, will start and, and end or start and stop. I just say mark this for for start and end for the and then I press the loop button and then I. I say when I play it again, this will loop forever eh, along this these two 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 notes. Okay. So I already know that the loop is, is okay, but how can I spread over the the timeline? So especially the the mouse gestures or the mouse uh, actions have modifiers with shift or control. If I if I drag one edge of the clip over here, I am dragging. But we we know we know key modifiers. It just resizes the clip. He adds silence, but the clip is uh, longer than than before. I will undo and put the, the original position. If I press Shift. The shift key, either right or, or left, doesn't matter, it's the same. And I drag one edge, what will happen? It will make something different. Okay. What happened? This is time stretching. I stretched the clip and the audio over the length, the new length of the, the clip. So but that's that's the other option is pressing controls. Pressing control key while dragging one of the edge of the of the clip over whatever I would begin. He replicates the clip over the timeline. So now you get uh, an, a, a long extension. We have several clips. I'm just clicking on the on the clip for selecting each each one. They are on the same file. This one doesn't get to, uh, to, to measures, so it's, it's incomplete. But it is spre spread it and unfolded to the, the, the new extension. So at least I get three loops sequenced on timeline using the same file. Yeah. Uh, no, but now you can only it because it's looping over the the vertical uh, markers, and uh, I will just get uh, get the the markers off. And uh, now this is the very simple operations you can you can do over over the clip while they're playing or while you were arranging and moving things. You can select parts of the clip and splitting clips. And then, but they they are a special mode, a special mode of selection. It comes also in the same menu. Uh, you get 
there are f at least three select modes different. It's a, when you select you select a clip at a once, one at a once, or you can sele select a, ver a vertical range over the timeline, so the you get sel selected all over the vertically, or you can select. Uh, sorry, I have to, to make it very slowly. In a rectangle fashion, so in a, a rectangle fashion is like you can select. The part that is shaded in blue is the selection. What I call the selection. You can select this as part of the clip. There are two ranges uh, selected, and you can uh, move these. You can delete. Oh, I just filed it to delete, but now I is clicked. So the click is removed, and the, the clips now are uh, splitted on the on the edge that I was the selection. I will undo. You can copy to the clipboard. I hit this button, which is the same. Copy. This is the, the, the regular clipboard operations. And then I can paste it somewhere, somewhere else. Let's paste it uh, like, say, like this. Just hit here, and there's. they are floating until you you can float to the same track or to another track. At least it has to be an audio track. But let's come later when we see the BD functions, which are a lot more complex than these ones. <laughs> so you just drop here, and now the, the clips are on a new track, on a new audio track that was created automatically also, just for convenience. And uh, now the, the sound is layered up if you play the tracks. Let's put them in the beginning. Now you will see a cacophony because uh, they are the same clip placed on, on different ones. Yeah? So they are they're playing. But you can solo just the first or you can solo just the, the second. Yeah. Now there's no material on, on, this, on this location, but you can start it again. Did I heard something? What's this? <laughs> okay, I, I think uh, everybody is familiar with this, okay? So, familiar with these operations. These operations are always only audio files here, but let's now uh, create uh, some bits of my, my own and uh, and do doing uh, some some music for with Kitractor, original music. I will start a new uh, a new session, and then le let's uh, let's talk about something else that many people that I've heard for uh, all the time and uh, all the time that Kitractor is in the world is playing the world. Play the same no, Kid Jack doesn't play any sound. I cannot hear anything. I can pu put yes for audio files over there, but I uh, want to to my MIDI that I will will write j just uh, in a few moments. I want to hear my MIDI. Yes, but that's right. Kid Tractor doesn't have any sound generation. It's just a sound processor. It's a, it's a sequencer, and you have to. Tell Qtractor to how they will render the MIDI. The MIDI ca can be rendered by uh, an external uh, synth, or, uh, an external soft synth, or with instrument plugins. And the pl instrument plugins are pl placed or inserted on a track basis or in the buzz basis. I will, I will talk about that later. But Let's start with a, a, a new track. How do we, of course, each, uh, each compu composer uh, knows how to do their, their business. I am no composer. I'm just uh, an enthusiast on software development and uh, with, a, with an eye with uh, music making. Just even I'm a very worse musician and, and I cannot be called a musician at all. So. But I will always start as um, for IDM, electronic d dance music. 
I like very much, uh, for example, uh, drum and bass from the 90s, which is now is, is not called is not called liquid uh, funk or liquid so something. <laughs> it's not a break beat, uh, liquid break beat, but that's that's uh, tags that uh, that the news are calling it. Okay, but I I start with a beat, with a beat, uh, a drum beat or a drum loop or something. Let's start one from scratch. That's the name of this talk or this presentation. Let's start. I will start with a MIDI track. So this is the the dialogue for for, for adding a, a track. I will call it drums. And I say here it is a MIDI track. When I say the type of the track, I have to say if it is either audio or MIDI. Audio, uh, audio track holds audio files or audio clips, and only. A MIDI track holds MIDI data, MIDI events, MIDI notes, uh, whatever. So uh, is it drums? I know by experience that drums is, mo is like uh, on a channel 5, on the GM general MIDI ma map, but it doesn't matter. Let's take it that the, this is my usual my usual uh, workflow, yeah. and I get, I get the track, but the, the track is empty, so I have to, I have to put a clip over there, just put, put the, the, the clip. I want the clip to 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 be this length at least, and uh, I hit the ear the the button to create new clip, okay? As it, this is my my current track, that is currently uh, as a made current track. When I say add a clip, yeah, I'm saying I'm saying telling the software to create a clip that will fill in this track this this zone or this range, and it will be a mi of course a MIDI clip, and uh, it has it will be have a MIDI file underneath. Oh yeah, let's go to the new clip. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Something people most users don't understand also. Why do you ask him this? Nobody asked for for me to give you a name. Yes, but you have to give a name to to your project or your, your new sound because it's the first time. It is untitled, it has no name, and I, I don't know the software doesn't know where to put the files the, that you are going to create. You have to put it somewhere. So I will say that we will call it like uh, Sonage <laughs> to nine. And, nine. and uh, he's already say suggesting a kick this uh, directory. It is an uh, extra nine, okay. Okay. Okay, we can do very much. <laughs> the future. <laughs> That's okay. Now he, he suggests that uh, this uh, director doesn't exist, but yeah, yeah. And, and he create he create now. You get to the pa the part that this is the MIDI clip. This is the the usual and the regular piano roll interface for dealing with MIDI. A MIDI clip. What is a MIDI clip? A MIDI clip is a portion of a MIDI file. That only deals in key tracks, only deals with one mini channel. And only. You only put ear notes or uh, events that applies to that mini channel. And the mini channel was chosen only at the track uh, level, a tra track property was channel 10, which is usually done by general MIDI specification or uh, convention to, to be on the on the uh, uh, drum tracks or percussion track. So, and why I choose the ch channel 10? Channel 10 ma makes me the l automatically in key tracker to put names on notes. So, so y you have here the piano notes, but each piano or each piano key is assigned to a type of sound or a type of drum sound by G GM map, general MIDI map. So I, I see that uh, I will 
put here, here a, a bass drum. So it's the kick. Also, the, you have to deal with. The, I have to introduce new notes. I have to change the edit mode. The edit mode is that that the or the select mode. The edit is off. So to introduce new events, I have to change it to to edit mode. Edit mode. Turn it on. So at this way, when I click on something, I know that this is uh, will be a bass drum or the acoustic ba bass drum. Uh, note 45, and it'll put there. Just click, and uh, it, it put there a diamond that represents the a drum hits of that uh, that note. So I will put this on on a grid. I will aument the grid or for you to see uh, a better way. If you don't follow what I'm doing, please ask. Okay? I have to put this on, on the beginning, which I'm failing to do at this moment. Oh, this, this is on a bit for so okay. So the, 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 they are diamonds uh, expressing the drum hits, but I prefer all the old time piano roll as rectangles, and I will just switch off the drum mode. So if I put here on, on where what was it? Acoustic snap. This is acoustic snap. Or acoustic drum. I put one hit here. Okay, uh, I'm just clicking where the I'm looking. Man, maybe I don't. I don't get this. Uh, it's four on the floor. As you already know. Yeah. And I put the. Maybe uh, the snare, electric snare. Okay, it's going to here. And in. Okay, we will need, need no more. Hmm? Every beat. This is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Let I can I can select the notes and can remove whatever they be when they are uh, blue, blue shaded they are. So uh, maybe what I really wanted to do was something like this. Yeah, maybe. Let's put on the on drum mode again. Yeah, it looks. Uh, looks a, lo a little bit better, uh, like a drum loop. Yeah, L let's play it. Remember that the Q-Track doesn't make sounds. Well, I cannot see hear anything. Of course, I, I said that Q-Track doesn't make sounds. You have to use an instrument plugin or an external instrument or an external equipment that you connect by via MIDI co cables or MIDI connection kits like jack or alpha sequencer. Yeah. So, let's use a, a plugin, okay? Uh, I think uh, everybody knows what a plugin is. I'm just resizing the, the clip to make the 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 thing uh, as uh, short as possible. I only want to take two, two measures, two bars. So, but now, how do, how, do I, how, do I, how do I add a plugin or an instrument for this sounding? Okay, I have to select which plugin I uh, I want to do. I will also show you the mixer, which is my my convenient way to show. To show to access the the whole the whole layout of the mixing console or and the, the pull tracks plugins, and I want to add a plugin by right clicking on, on this menu and adding a plugin. So 
QTracker has support for large spa plugins, DSSI plugins or DSI plugins, VST plugins, Linux VSTs. This is v uh, Linux compilers and build uh, plugins for Linux in Linux with a Linux compiler. And LV2. LV2 is the standard uh, pl plugin format and specification for uh, for Linux and uh, open source soft software. It is the the, the the cutting edge of uh, of Linux audio development uh, nowadays. As as uh, Flip uh, already been talking. So let's see what the LV2 plugins are there. Oh, the there are plenty of them. But I want uh, something that says drums for. Yeah, I have I have one developed also one plugin that is drum key KV1, which is a sampler or a, a, a rumble sampler that you can add uh, as a plug LV2 plugin uh, on uh, your DAW, not not necessarily good structure. The, uh, although the the GUI aspect of this is very similar and uh, very matching what Qtractor has. This is not part of Qtractor. This is a plugin, external, uh, a plugin that was developed independently, but myself, of course, but, <laughs> but this is not part of Qtractor. This is another piece of software, completely in independent. And I want to say that this is the, the, the drum elements, or the, the part of the, the drum kits, and uh, you can also say, we see that there already has the the drum key names for or following the general MIDI uh, map or specification. A very old map from the early early 90s or late 80s. And um, I would say that oh, I have I have some I have to choose something for a for a drum a bass drum. It has to be a, a an audio file. A wave, a flag, an hog, but not MP3. Yeah. <laughs> and I will. Uh, oh, that's it. Yeah. Already, there's an history. There was an history before the internet. There are drum hits over here. Oh, I double click too fast. Sorry. So this on this folder there are uh, kick kick drum samples. I will just choose this one, which I, to here, directly here, I can click on this black, oh, I cannot hear anything. Why? Why, why, why? Ah, it's, a, it's an another pitfall that the plugin was inserted, but it was not activated. So it's not active. It's not processing any sound. I just this uh, black LED says that is turned off, or bypassed, or not activated. Just clicking on this one and bring uh, the 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 GUI again. It's uh, I can see from the mixer that they are producing sound, but. Qtractor not is not connected to any to, to something. Oh, it is. I want to go to audio. Oh, sorry. Again, audio is master audio no, is only for the system. So why I don't hear anything? Ah. So it was the, mi the operator <laughs> mixer operator was, was turning down. Okay, you, you don't need a bell. So we have one sample. The other sample was on the electric snare, you remember? So just choose another sample for this. Uh, snare, snare. It can be uh, this one, number four. Okay. It sounds like, it sounds like, like it is working. Now, I will play the, the sound, the, the sound, the that mini clip. Yeah, too lame. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so wha what's wrong over here? It's the tempo. Okay, it's too too slow. Uh, it's, it's not 
one. So let, let's make it uh, as a, a drum and bass tempo or a rhythm. And we put it 174, 72, for example. Let's put it, uh, play it again. It's faster, but <laughs> faster, but, it, but it's still lame. <laughs> yeah, but we will get over it. So, hmm? no, 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 no. But it's not there. What I, what I want. I just want to demonstrate <laughs> how to put mo more sound. So, but we have. Yeah, uh, probably want to put uh, an eye clap, uh, hi hat, uh, on uh, on this to make the t -t 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 or something like. Let's uh, let's choose uh, here on the closer hi hat entry. Let's choose something that re makes <laughs> like a hi hat. Maybe it's this. Uh, maybe. Almost, but for the for the case or in study, yeah, it, it could be enough. But uh, I, I don't hear uh, any I had because I, I di didn't put the any one. Let's uh, where is it? O is this, this is the open the I close that I had. Yeah, maybe. Wrong shot. I I just selected it, <coughs> and I can move it with uh, with the mouse or the keyboard. Let's play it. Yeah, pretty lame. Anyway. <laughs> so now I I'm editing, of course. Let's make it make let's make it, it loop. It's easy also. Just it uh, loops uh, the clip. So we just now you can listen while what you are doing. So let's talk about the the grid and uh, editing uh, according to the, to a grid or a metro a metro beating and and, uh, and sorry I stopped it. So this is the, this is the box that we are have here, and uh, it gets to bits. Bits, uh, remember, I, I said uh, bits in the tractor and in in, the, uh, in this model is a quarter note, is a midi quarter note. So I will make it down now as a eighth note. The grid now is the div divisions that you see are according to eighth notes. Uh, did I did it did it well or did it will be sixteen? Ah no no yes I did it well but we are not seeing the grid according with detail. So we uh, just making the changing the view I can put the grid over there. So you now we now you see the old divisions. So let's put more. More high hats <laughs> over here and and see. Okay. Yeah. We we're getting somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so somewhere. But this is very techno. It's not drum and bass, so we have just to maybe. A simple break beat is. It's almost uh, enough. Okay. This is very regular MIDI operations or MIDI editing that you get on a MIDI, MIDI roll in Qtractor. So, 
as I said in earlier, it is free form. If you want, if you have plenty of questions at this moment, you can start the questions and answers, <laughs> please. But let's just talk about something else, then uh, I'll, I'll get to the. Other. Je yeah, the the rhythm is a little lame. It's very slow. Uh, not very uh, slow. It's very quantized, m uh, very robotic. How, how can I? What Qtractor can do about that? I select all the all the all the nodes, and uh, with tools I can quantize that, or quantize it on a on a bit on a d on the grid, or I can say that add a little swing. You know the swing quantize uh, everything. So I just add a, a very little, not for full swing, and just l let's see if the if the <laughs> if the sing if the sings. Uh, improved. Hey, it looks more human or more uh, with more groove. Yeah, right? I can do uh, anything about the, the the notes that are laid out in this way. At this time, I will save, save something. Just just for keeping you on the safe side, and then I make more. Uh, more arrangements. Select everything with the tools I make uh, now uh, a randomization. Uh, s someone will say that is humanization, but I'll, I will take the value. The value of, of the node chart is the, vo the velocity. Of the I will take the, I wanted this random like 5%. It's not fully random, like noise random. So it just changes the the randomization of the value velocity, not the timing of the. Okay, so it feels a, a little more human and a, a, a little less robotic. But you can walk or use many other features. And uh, another one that I want to, to to show you now is like one of the recent additions to to Qtractor. Which is the the piano about the piano roll? The piano roll now has a uh, his own uh, his own uh, toolbar for showing time, which is now it's uh, the B BBT time and uh, its own own uh, tempo and the time signature. This is the global tempo and time signature of the whole uh, whole uh, timeline of the whole session of Q Tractor, but you can change and make a secondary time signature for this piece, this, this MIDI clip only. So you can, you can say this, that you will be a 7-4 one, and you, you can see the grid has changed over that. So it, this is the, the kind of support for polyrhythm and polymetric on Qtractor. You can express and it can compose, uh, make uh, make rhythms and roads independently of the main or main song or the main tempo map. So th this this way, this clip has a grid, a, a snappy, a quantizing grid that is different from the the global, and, and you can put this different for each MIDI clip. You know, so you can have as many time signatures as uh, as clips there are different from the main uh, the main track the main uh, the main view yep uh, can you detect the the times uh, the time and speed from uh, playing midi uh, from playing midi so like flexible d detection of time by if i just play on the piano uh, midi notes that you get the time from the tempo from the the actually played MIDI notes. Uh, no, no, not directly. We're eating the, the notes, Ooh. but you can uh, yes uh, have MIDI clock <coughs> and read from MIDI clock from uh, what you put on your your, your controller, or uh, by via jack transport or via time base. The question is more like if if yes, if, if I, I play live and I I change the tempo over the time of playing, if that can be detected in a kind of no like no, 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 no 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 
not in this way. You can change it, but uh, you have to change the control on your MIDI clock controller originator. That is okay. That's the only way. But detecting by you, pl you playing notes, and then he's detecting the 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 tempo or the rhythm and the and the or the time signature signature is mm, I don't know if it, it can be a future fixture yes but uh, it's it's a very tricky we, as you could see from the audio when I was uh, detecting the tempo for audio uh, it actually for for the energy pulses of the PCM audio the PCM signal using Albio, Albio library, okay, but th this is not very accurate. So, you, g you get uh, times that not, not the real time, the, the real tempo that you really want. <laughs> See? Because it's, it's not very accurate, it's not the precision is very subje subjective, yeah, and uh, you can feel it for you, uh, I think. So, it's tricky because of that, uh, yes, there are algorithms, they are very good for that, but I don't really know if uh, the open source community has anything that approaches the professionals and commercial uh, tools that you have on, on other platforms. Or for example, for, uh, for audio, for the, uh, the time stretching algorithm for, for making time stretch uh, audio, it's good. But it doesn't doesn't work for everything for every types of polyphonic uh, si signals. Uh, but uh, Windows and uh, Windows or uh, from Elastic, Elastic Z planes, Elastic Pro, which is what wha one of the key features in Ableton Live was using that for implementing the warp for, for wobbling warp that uh, they put can uh, time extra extract. Uh, very variously uh, audio frames is really good and uh, but there's no there's no replica on the uh, open source uh, so they are that's a g that's a gap uh, that's a fault rubber band a little lab from uh, chris canham and uh, i don't know the, the company of the is good but works best for some types of audio and you have to tweak some parameters for working working good to other types of uh, other types of signal or other types of uh, sounds or, uh, but elastic pro works best works good for uh, <laughs> for every t every genre every ty type of audio it's really 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 effing good <laughs> so <laughs> yeah okay more questions so I I my presentation, live presentation, is almost off, so it's, uh, it's only short. Um, I always run over. <laughs> There's no, even if it's worth four hours in a row, I will always run over. <laughs> it's so many things to tell, and so many, so many things to to explain, and and so many pieces of crap software that they are here <laughs> made it in my my own keyboards and so more questions please I, I actually do have a question about the drum kv uh sampler that she also wrote so Let remember me show you um yeah i i actually uh try to use it a few times but i'm more like an acoustic drummer and i tried i tried to program some drums and i think uh one thing i remember i noticed was that like for example, if you play the same notes, like first with the high velocity and then with the lower velo velocity, then the first note gets gets, mute, cut, gets yes. muted, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is quite unnatural for uh, like I don't know acoustic drum situations. Yeah, but th that's the way MIDI works. You yeah. you I, said don't, I, I don't I don't I don't even <laughs> know that many uh, sampler plugins, but uh, this would be maybe one one option to to maybe to toggle in the plugin, especially on the. This uh, series of V1 is, is a very strict on MIDI interpretation. So a MIDI, no, a MIDI if you, you if you get two MIDI notes on notes on on the same new note on the same key, the 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 second one uh, actually 
functions also as a note off for the, for the previous one. That's MIDI specification. <laughs> of Boss. course, you can you can dodge something and you're but making something else. You can start a new voice, but uh, then you'll lose control over the over the, the length of the notes. But uh, yeah, you could you could be used on drum key V1 or a drum a drum kit sampler, which that doesn't have regard to note offs, or you can put it that way. You can turn it this this control here not off so not off doesn't function but uh, yeah but if, if you get uh, a, a second note on on the same key on the same value yeah the second one uh, turns off the the first one uh, so I think it's uh, maybe um, I understand what what your point was that uh, for example, when you have some, I don't know, crash symbols, the samples are very long usually. So um, we, we, you might expect that when you play two crash symbols very quickly, that the, the first one will play till the end, mm -hmm. uh, even if the MIDI note has ended early. Uh, so yeah, that's the way to for work around, put the same sample in different notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so drum key if you want will always cut off the uh, if the, it is the first note, note. Yes. Okay, so there's no way to have like a wrong release that will have two or more voices of the same uh, note. No, playing. because of the second note is the same value is the uh, is uh, applying to the the same uh, uh, voice that they are sounding. So it is it's best. Oh, a new note, a new note, but is the same that is uh, already already running. Oh, I have to shut it down because this is a, a, a note off, not on in sequence, in di direct sequence. But if you put the same sample here, a crash symbol over here, your crash symbol over there, there are different notes, and you can put it there uh, until the, the other stays re released, and it is the second one it will continue voicing as, a, as normal. That's a workaround. But <laughs> the other way, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's not. It's the way it works. Okay, you said in the beginning that um, Q Tractor is a sequencer with DAW features. Yeah. Could you go into detail uh, how uh, Q Tractor differs from other DAWs? So, what's different and why is it more a sequencer? Because we were it was uh, it, it, it depends on the history, on how it was developed. It was developed as a sequencer. And a sequencer is just to put uh, material, audio material or MIDI material, media material uh, in sequence and play it back, or, re or you record it, or you play it back in sequence in an arrangement, in a sequence arrangement. But it doesn't uh, edit audio, or it doesn't, uh, yeah, can you can edit MIDI, but that's not uh, the, the digital audio workstation uh, main function. And you can mix it. You can but yeah, yeah, what I say is, it has door features, yeah, but it's not a full-blown door, monolithic door, as uh, as the others that you know. <laughs> Just like that. But this historically was uh, was conceived for uh, sequencing audio and MIDI material, and especially with MIDI, it was for driving external. MIDI, vintage hardware, uh, outboard hardware, that it, is, it was co uh, conceived for that because it, at the time was what I have at home. So I, I have some keyboards, synths, vintage synths, analog and digital, and from the from the 80s, and they work. They still they were. Uh, you remember the X7 from Yamaha? Yeah, the de facto standard. Uh, for for uh, since yes, it was one of the first since using MIDI, and uh, you can use Qtractor to drive since uh, since like that. It was conceived in the beginning for that, if you, but yeah, as a sequencer, it, it, this is the, the role of a sequencer, no, not for uh, making a. Like say, a sequencer is for musicians and composers and uh, and conductors, while a DAW 
was original for sound engineering and and, and uh, yep. <laughs> so. so thank you very much for the talk for the demonstration, and um, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.